Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not be weary in well doing, yeah. for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Now the Amplified Bible, instead of weary, says lose heart. Yeah. It says, let us not lose heart in well doing, for uh, in due season we'll reap if we faint not. How many want to reap? Yes, sir. How many want to reap bad stuff? No. That means you got so good, good stuff. stuff. All right. Hallelujah. Let me read a couple of different, uh, uh, I'm going to read these three verses from two different translations. It'll be the Phillips in uh, six, I mean seven and nine, and the Connie Bear in verse eight. So let me read it to you this way. Don't be under, under any illusion. You cannot make a fool of God. Man's harvest of life will depend entirely on what he sows. That's Phillips, then Connie Bear, verse eight. The man who now sows for his own flesh shall reap from a, there from a harvest doomed to perish. And he that sows for the spirit shall from the spirit reap the harvest of eternal life. And then verse 9 from the Phillips again, let us now, uh, let us not grow tired of doing good. For unless we throw in our hand, the ultimate harvest is assured. Ooh. Hallelujah. The ultimate harvest is assured. Well, let Lord. us quit. You know, if you throw in your hand or like in you know, uh, boxing arena, if you throw in the towel, um, you know, then, then you're not going to get the prize if you quit. Right. Amen? Yeah. Now, let's, let me tell you something. You can't be a quitter and win. Right. Amen. And you got to participate to have the opportunity to win. Right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you got to keep going when it gets tough. Yeah. Now we have all kinds of sayings and motivation. And when, the, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. You know, and, and all those different things. But the bottom line is, for the believer, you can't quit. Yeah. Uh, we're faced with a lot of temptation. I believe we're all faced with temptation. You know, temptations to sin, temptations to do wrong, temptations, I mean, you know, temptations, temptations. And I'm not talking about the temptations of the singing group, because that Nathan might be in here, I gotta let him know. <laughs> After that animal thing, I had to make sure he wasn't thinking about the, you know, the temptations, you know, singing some song. You know, ooh, ooh, ooh. anyway. One of the greatest temptations for believers, are you ready for this? This is profound. This is heavy. That's not even sexual. Go ahead. Everybody thinks, you know, I know you probably think he's going to be sexual. No. The, one of the greatest temptations for believers, for Christians, is the temptation to quit. Uh -huh. yeah, I believe it. That is what Christians face more than anything else, is the temptation to quit, to give up, to say it's not worth it, to, to come up with all kinds of, you know, whatever, but the bottom line is they want to quit. And everybody in this room, I'll guarantee you, everybody in this room at some point and at some time has faced that temptation, oh, sure. if not more than once, and if not someplace on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The temptation to quit. Look, I passed you, I'm gonna tell you something, there's times, past couple of years, yeah. I've, you know, I've wanted to write a resignation letter. Mm -hmm. I've wanted to call up God and say, find somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'll just be real honest with you. Yeah. you know, it's been a tough two, two or three years here. I mean, you know, just, you know, listen, what you face on, on, on an individual level, now multiply that corporately through the church and think of what's going on with the church. Yeah. I mean, it's been, a, it's been tough. I've yes. wanted to quit. Yes. You know? Then when I look at quitting, what, what's the option? You know, because what's quitting entail? Disobeying God. Right. You know? Getting out of the plan of God. And everybody wants to quit. Uh huh. You know? Lord, you know, I, I can go sell shoes and just quit. You know? That if I used to pastor. You can't do that. No, 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 no. Because see, I want the ultimate prize. Right. And then I want I want to have the ultimate harvest assured. Uh -huh. But I can't throw in the hand if I do. Yeah, that's right. That's Amen. Yeah. So we all we've all wanted to quit. Now when you yield to that temptation to quit, it will thwart your development of the nature of the character of Christ within you and it will ultimately keep you out of your spiritual harvest. Yes, it will. The good harvest. Yeah. So everybody say, I can't quit. I can't quit. Say, Pastor Hagen, you say, I cannot be defeated, and I will not quit. <laughs> Hallelujah. They even talk about the baton. He always put the baton story in there. Right about that time, you rather reach out, I ran track. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you ran, and you, you had, but anyway, I'm just, that's his sermon. Why don't you tell you, that's right. Is that good? It's good, all right. You know, uh, imitation is the highest form of compliment. Yeah. Love, Pastor Hagen. 
Amen. Amen. Just don't think I'm mocking him. I'm just, I love to see the way he preaches. Hallelujah. Amen. But he's going to, you cannot be defeated. I will not quit. Now, listen, if you quit, you will be defeated. Right. If you quit, yes. you will be defeated. Yeah, yeah. So you say, I cannot be defeated because I will not quit. Hallelujah. All right. So if you can't, if you're going to be, if you're not going to be defeated, you're not going to quit. That means when the stuff comes, you got to do something. You got to face it head up, and you got to do. What Paul said, he said, I press toward the mark. See, there's a mark you got to be pressing toward. That's the high calling in Christ Jesus. God's called you out of darkness into his light. God has called you to run a race and not to quit. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's look on here. Let's look at these, let's look at these different verses. Now, verse 7. Um, verse 7 is, don't be under any illusion. I'm going to read Phillips again. You cannot make a fool of God. Man's harvest and life will depend on entirely what he sows. So now, most people relate this scripture. <clears throat> to um, reaping and sowing in the realm of good and bad deeds towards others. You know, you talk about somebody, they will talk about you. You do something bad to somebody, somebody will do something bad to you. You give something good to somebody, somebody will give something good to you. Now, while that principle is true, that is not the main thrust of the scripture. That's not the main import of the scripture. The scripture is in reference to uh, sowing and reaping of spiritual things, either sowing to your flesh or sowing to your spirit. That is the main context here. Amen? So this, now let's, let's say this. Now, don't get mad at me. I'm going to turn around. That way you won't let them looking at you. All right? The spiritual state we're in today is a direct result of what you sowed yesterday. Amen. Oh, somebody shot me in the back. I felt it. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I say, I haven't looked at anybody, so I'm not looking at you. You can't say he, he was preaching at me. <clears throat> if you got to preach that right then, the Holy Ghost was talking to you. Yeah. All right? Hallelujah. The spiritual state we're in today is a direct result of what we sowed yesterday. In other words, how you've been sowing in your spiritual life is, 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 is why your spiritual status is where it is right now. Mm -hmm. That's not to condemn you. What's that to do? It's to locate you. Yeah, right. Man. So you can't make adjustments if you don't know why you are where you are. Yeah, right. Gotta be Amen. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now, see, now I agree with like Alcoholics Anonymous, when they finally get signed to admit they're an alcoholic. What I don't agree with is saying it every day for the rest of your life. Amen? You do have to come to the acknowledgement when you're, when you're an alcoholic. Because most alcoholics, I, I, I can handle my liquor. Yeah, for about 30 seconds. Hello? And that's about it. So alcohol, I agree with that statement you know, where they have to say, I am an alcoholic. They have to come to the realization. Now listen, Christians... You've got to come to the realization that you've been slothful or lazy or, or been diligent, whatever it is, that, that you know, the reason your spiritual life, and that's not everything, right? Listen, there's attacks of the devil, but your spiritual life. Right. If it's a wreck, it's because you've been so in wreck. I don't need to go to church. I don't need to submit to anybody. I can just sit at home and have house church. Really? Do you really believe that? Do you really believe you're going to get as much at home, you know? And if you talk to them, you find they're mad at some preacher. Right. And you wonder, well, you're walking in and forget to say, you wonder why you're messed up. Can't be mad at preachers. I've, I've had people leave the church and then run into somebody from my church five, six, seven years later, and they start running, running me down. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you that, Pastor, you've got to be kidding me. Right. <laughs> You're still hung up seven years ago? Oh, please. Lord, did I get the right sermon last <laughs> Now, y'all hear you go home. Where? Boy, they said you're here. Rest of you just sat there. <laughs> I'm going to preach it anyway, so you may as well look good and say amen. amen. <laughs> All right? Now, we, we don't want bad hearts. See, I don't want a bad heart. Right, right. Now, um, so that means you're going to have to walk and sowing good things to your spirit. Yes. And you're going to have to not sow bad things to your spirit. We talk, oh, we've, heard, we've heard the story most of us have that the dad hated told about the woman. You know, when he, when he asked her when did that thing happen between her and somebody else in the church. You see, we had Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It'll, it'll be seven years ago this coming Thursday. And he, he looked at her and he said, his mouth must have hit the floor because she went, no, 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 don't, don't take me, Mom, Brother Hagin, I forgive them all right, but I never will forgive what that old devil did to me. Ah. 
Seven years later, she ain't forgiven, given that old devil. Now listen, you can kind of think she really didn't forgive her. She's still calling her an old devil. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hello? I, I kind of wonder about your forgiveness paradigm. And it's kind of messed up, you know what I'm saying? I forget, you know, he sees how I've forgiven them, and they'll still, still carry on that you're not having forgiven them. Yeah. You've forgiven them, you've forgiven them, you've forgiven them. Yeah. Like God forgives, as far as the east is from the west. Thank you, God. See, yeah. notice the Bible didn't say from the far as the north is from the south. Right. You go far enough north, you'll go south. Yeah. Go up and low. When you get to the north pole, you get to a certain point, you're still going south. Yeah. If you go east and keep going and just keep going east, you will always go east. You'll never be west. Yeah. That's why God said as far as the east is from the west. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Y'all hear you going home? I mean, oh, anybody else still here? here? Still here. All right. Hallelujah. Now, we got to learn to sow good things. Let's look over here at Deuteronomy chapter 30. Go to Deuteronomy 30. Familiar scripture from any of you. Oh. Now, just in case you're one of those that believe, you know, everything's going on in your life, but God, God has some predestines. You know, laid out plan that you're supposed to go through this, supposed to have that happen. But then, uh, can I just say Tommy Rot and bunk and garbage and uh, just forget all that super stuff? Yes, you can. Thank you. <coughs> man has a free will. Yes, sir. I said, man has a free will. Man can choose to do right or do wrong. Even in the Garden of Eden, Adam had the right, the legal right to choose wrong or right. He didn't have the moral right, but he had the legal right to do it, and he chose the wrong way. Amen. And it was, listen, it wasn't because Adam, she deceived him. The Bible actually says she was deceived. He wasn't. He was, you know, how do you remember the Sunday school picture? Adam on the other side of the garden, fishing in the lake while Eve offers him the fruit and deceives him. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you know, some male shoving his pig right now. Right. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 15 through 20. It didn't happen that way. The Bible actually says that, that she did turn to get to her husband who was with her. Yeah. He watched the whole thing happen and could have stopped it. Uh-huh. How do you know he could have stopped it? Let them have dominion over the earth. Yeah. He had dominion over the serpent. Yeah. Could have booted him. <laughs> he wasn't doing his job. That was Amy Nathan, I'm sure. Yeah, See, I gotta stop that. Come on. Now, see, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. Now, God says to the, to the people of Israel, I set before you life and good, death and evil, in that I command thee this day. Now, God gave a commandment in relation to those choices mm-hmm. to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. Why? That thou mayest live. And multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And stop right there, verse 16. He said, if you'll obey his commandments, if you love God to do those things, you're going to be blessed. Mm-hmm. Now I know we're under the new covenant, we're under grace, we don't have to do anything. I'm going to get blessed no matter what. Sometimes just don't make a preacher cuss. <laughs> you know, that kind of stupid statement that messes people up. Yeah. You know, that you can go out and pour and do anything you want to do. It's just not going to have any effect on your life at all whatsoever. You can go out and steal from folks. You can go out and rob from folks. You can go out and shoot people. You can go out and, you know, drink and, you know, and, and watch pornography and do anything you want to do. It's just not going to, it's going to affect you. Yes. I said, it's going to affect well, you. You're right. But I'm under grace. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Yeah. Yep. And Paul spent a whole lot of time in Romans chapter 6 talking about how that if you yield your members as servants of unrighteousness, you become a slave to that master. Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't like that. I must believe we can just do anything we want to because we're under. No, well, just go ahead. It's stupid. <laughs> and then come crying to me about six months from now how everything's all horrible in your life and how you can't get anything straight and how you can't hear from God. You, know, you can't keep doing the wrong for the stuff and expect God to bless. That's really good. Point. So what do you do? You repent. Yes. And you do the right stuff. Right, right, right. You start on the right scene. Yeah. Listen, you can't go out and plant a bunch of weeds out in the field and then expect to get a harvest of wheat. That's good preaching. Go ahead on. Hallelujah. All right. 
Somebody almost said, I'm upset. Hallelujah. All right? Yeah. That's good preaching. All right. See, I've said before you lie in death, lady, verse 17. But if thou turn thy heart away, and so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish, and ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record against you, to this day against you, that I have said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Listen, 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 listen. Didn't say I've chosen for you which one you're going to get. It says, therefore, choose life. Therefore, choose life. Yeah, Therefore, you got to make a choice. Yeah. Oh. Now, listen, I know this is not the fun message. This is not the, I'm going to be out of debt next week because I gave 20 cents to offering this week. Uh-huh. Are you here? Yeah. You know what? I, I saw a preacher and I ran through $25 inside his coat pocket. Therefore, I'm going to have a multi million dollar house next year. Everybody loves that. They'll just throw offerings out there. But I'm a pastor. I live with the people. You know? See, people can, people can preach fluff and puff. And they don't get to sit around and see what the results are. I'm a pastor. And I know that in order for you to have a successful daily life, there are things you're going to have to do to win. Yeah, this is good. And not get caught up in, you know, in, in extremes of this or extremes of that. Yeah. All the, you know, have you ever noticed how some of the people who always want to, you know, get big offerings and whatever, and I'm not doing that. But I always want to just tell you all the happy stuff. You said this before. You put two seminars in town, one on the happy, clappy church, and one on the you got to live right church, and you see which one everybody goes to. Uh-huh. They'll all come in with a hula hoop and have happy, clappy church. I believe in I believe that the Bible is a positive message, but it also has things you need to do to walk in that we got. Oh, well, that's good preaching. You've got to do certain things. Yep. Amen. And he says here, he says, therefore choose life. You've got to make a decision. Let me tell you this: a daily decision. Amen. Paul Paul was, had to buffet his body. He had to keep it under. It was a daily process. Amen. <laughs> so, but but uh, no, I didn't have to. I call it verse like I call heaven work earth record against you this day. That I said before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life. What? That thou may that thou and thy seed may live. Now he said, if you will choose life, you and your seed what? You've got to set an example for your seed. Yeah. yeah. It is the response. Listen, you can't how many grew up with this thing right in your house? Don't do like I do, do like I say do. Yeah. Anybody else ever hear that? Oh, I heard it, yeah. What are you doing? You're setting an example, so you're saying one thing and setting an example another. But what do you think they're gonna follow? Your words or your actions? What are your kids gonna follow? Your words or your actions? Your kids. See, if you'll choose life and set the example of living godly for your children and living the right way before your children, coming to church and smiling at church and talking about how much you love your wife and slapping her at home. Hello. Now, if I find out, I'm going to slap you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Say, I'm bigger than you. I'll use a two-by-four. Right. <laughs> Ain't no man should be slapping on your wife. Yeah. Come to church. Oh, I love the Lord. Dancing in front of the church and going home and beating on your wife. Yeah. Now, women, don't you be dancing around in the church and then pulling a knife on them at night. Yeah. All right. That one over there. <laughs> man, wake up, got a butcher knife in his throat. That'll mess you up. Yes, sir. You sleep one eye open for the rest of your life. Hello? <laughs> well, anyway. Keep going. <laughs> Come here and talk about how much you love the Lord. Then walk out the door and you can't even keep your mouth. You can't even keep your mouth from cussing like a sailor. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, Bobby, I'm free. You know, the Bible says, can bitter and sweet water come out of the same fountain? Uh-huh. It cannot. Hello? Amen. Amen. I mean, I know people. Man, you mention one person's name. There's the, 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 I mean, you, you got to put a smokestack on top of their head to relieve the pressure. Amen. Amen. Are you here? You going home? Still here, Pastor. All right. That went over real quick. Just keep going. We got to choose. We got to choose life, and parents, <clears throat> you got to live that life, so that your children will follow after your example. 
You can't treat your children like a pet dog and then wonder why they went the way of the world. Right. Yeah. Right. That one over there. You gotta love those children. You gotta set an example before them. Even when they're not doing right, you gotta love them. Amen. I didn't say not discipline them. There's a difference between discipline and abuse. Oh, yes, there is. You gotta love your children. You gotta discipline them. And they, they need a whack on the back side. God patted it for a reason. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't y'all get weird. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, you're right. Because he said here that you and your seed may live. Are you here? Yes, okay. Then he goes on and said that, that you and your seed may live. Verse 20, thou mayest love the Lord thy God and may obey his voice and may cleave unto him. I heard somebody, I, I was listening to him. Uh, I forgot who was here recently. They were saying, if you're, if you're walking in, 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 in relationship with God and walking in obedience with God, you cannot go out and do things you know are wrong with a good conscience. Yeah. You're, you're going to be convicted. Yeah, right. Now, we got a whole teaching out right now that's teaching people not to be condemned or convicted about their lifestyles. Because God's already forgiven you, you're going to heaven anyway. Everybody say, Father Lord, And I'm not talking about the Oscar Mayer, I'm talking about the cheap brain. All right? <laughs> Listen to this. For he is thy life. And the length of thy days, and thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Okay, so we have this passage. Now, this passage says, You choose it. So that does away with the predestined thing. You know, every day is going bad in my life because God said I'm not going to go through this. Now, if you're instructed to make the right choice in order to be what God wants you to be, get what God wants you to have. Amen. Uh -huh. Don't think you can make bad choices. Now, let me say this. I'm going to come on those sides real quick. All right. There's forgiveness and there's restoration. Thank God. Thank God. Thank you, God. Amen. But in order to seek forgiveness and restoration, you've got to acknowledge that you've done wrong so that you can get the forgiveness and restoration. Right. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. And when you do that, let me say this now. Once you ask God to forgive you and you and you're looking and you're working in the process of God restoring you, forget about what you did. Don't come up and testify for 25 years that back in 1981 you did such and such. And you just can't believe the Lord forgave you. Well, that's 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 no 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 no. That, that's that's rehearsing. That, that is sin consciousness. Yes, it is. You know, the Bible tells us the blood of Jesus will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the Bible says this, that his blood will purge our conscience from dead works and serve the living God. Meaning, when you ask God to forgive you, son, that the blood is purged from your conscience. You don't need to keep rehearsing what you did. Right. However, we've got a lot of Christians who are just going to deny that what they're doing is wrong and that they may never get blessed no matter what. It don't work that way. I know this isn't joyous. Yeah, yeah. Really, if good. we can find things in our life that are hindering right. our development or our growth or our ability to walk in the full blessing of God, let's find them and get rid of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Why not? I mean, why sit there and just keep doing the same thing? How many of you ever beat your head on the wall? Literally. Now, I used to, when I was in football, when I was in high school, I used to beat my head on the lockers without the helmet. Uh, to cite myself up for the game. I just walk up to a locker and go, hey, bam, bam, bam. Dance all in it. And, uh, and then I thought that wasn't enough. So when people try to, you know, try to, you know, size me up and try to give me whatever here in school, I just walk up to the center block wall and get my head on. <laughs> hey, bam, hey, you want some of this? They say I'm crazy now. You don't fight crazy people. Right. Now my family's thinking of me, what's wrong with daddy now? <laughs> yeah. Just, just, just. But all of that kind of stupid stuff, how many of you have ever been in spiritually speaking or in life been beating your head against the wall and not getting anywhere? Sure. Yeah. All you're getting is a headache. And I tell you what, when I did beat my head, it would hurt. I just wouldn't let anybody know it hurt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that brings you to this state. Write this down. If you want to be dumb, you don't have to be tough. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's word tells us to make the right choices in life. Now here, this is the most wonderful thing. God tells you if you make the wrong choices, this is going to happen, but 
if you make the right choices, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's right there. So he's already told you what not to do and what to do to get what you want. Yeah, yeah. Nobody wants the bad stuff. Anybody here want the bad stuff? I already asked that question. I'll ask it again. Nope. Anybody want the bad stuff? No! We don't want the good stuff. Amen. Now, before we go too much further, let me, let me throw this in here. We're, not everything that happens bad in your life is because you sow the seed and did something bad. There's a devil out there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. We're talking about your spiritual state, you know, a, 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 a consistent state of where you are. Yeah. Not about one bad day or a bad thing. Okay? Those bad things happen to good people because there's a bad devil out there. Mm -hmm. We're talking about, well, that's why I said this is this main thing is not based, it's not mainly, you know, uh, sowing, reaping good and bad things for people and you know, you get your come up and all that. This is primarily talking about your spiritual state, where you are spiritually. And if you're in a bad place spiritually, then you haven't been doing the right things, sowing the right stuff so that you keep your spirit. Now listen, how many of you ever, how many of you ever counted about wrong and you, and you slide off the spiritual side? Come on. You know it's true. You know, either you're hurt or whatever, and you, and you kind of just slide away from God because, you know, you're, you're, you're hurting or whatever. But see, you're just not sowing your seed. Mm -hmm. You got to go back to when you right seat. Mm -hmm. You got to get back in the game. Amen? Yeah, right. All right. Um, we're to live in the Spirit. How many, want, how many want to live in the Spirit, not in the flesh? Yes, sir. Don't you look. All right. Bless you. All right. No, but, no, you don't want to live in the flesh. Because we know, we already know, you, from living your life, you know what the flesh is going to produce. Yeah. Don't we know what the flesh is going to produce? Mm -hmm. You know, we, when we got we got the worst flesh, we'll get to it. But life in the spirit, when you walk with God, when you walk in the spirit, when you choose life, everybody say, I choose life. I choose life. When you choose life, you choose to walk with God, guess what? Walking in the spirit, I mean, I just don't, don't get too excited, produces an unconscious strength. See, your relationship with God will, will create a faith in God. That when you see God's word, you'll believe it. Yeah, it's unconscious, but it's really unconscious. Really unconscious. You're not going, okay, I gotta believe, I gotta believe, I gotta believe. Yeah. Now you come up to something and say, No, my father. Right, right. Because you walk really good friends. Yeah. You remember that song? I go to the garden alone. Yeah. We walk, he walks with me and talks with me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 That tells me I'm a veteran. So we're we're walking with God. We're communing with God. We're fellowshipping with God. We know his character. We know who he is. When trouble arises, we look at his word. Well, that's my dad said this, and I know my dad, and I know my dad's gonna do this such thing. Mm -hmm. Amen. See, an unconscious faith develops. It's okay to, to practice putting stuff in and developing faith, but I'm telling you, we also need to be working on that side where this unconsciously faith is being developed is because we're communing with God. That's great. We're so in good seed. We're so in good seed. Amen. You know, uh, Luke 12, 11, 12 says, when they bring you to the synagogues and to the magistrates and powers, take the thought of what thing you should answer or say, well, the Holy Ghost shall teach you. In the same hour, what you ought to say. Romans 8, 14, for as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see, walking in the Spirit, things begin to flow out of you that are good. That are good. That are good. Thank God. I mean, like, I've said this before. If you want over results, watch over all the time. If you want to be messed up psychologically, watch Dr. Phil. See, everybody thinks, you want know, these talk shows where they got these people on there you know, they're going to, they're going to counsel the world yeah. from a television show. And everybody just claps in the audience and yeah, that's right. Let's come with that in real life and work in real life, pal. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I said, hello. Yeah. Sheesh. You know, and, and all this feel good stuff. We, you know, I remember a number of years ago, I read Dear Abby. This was probably back in the 80s. I mean, you should meet Dear Abby, yeah. Dear Abigail, yeah. you know, the, her sister. Yeah, they, were, they, were, they were sisters. Yeah. They were advice columnists. We didn't know their head from the hole in the bottom. Okay. The people write them letters and they give them anything about, oh, yeah, that's great. Did you hear? It's like they're authorities. Uh-huh. What? They're just two people answering letters in a, new, in a column that makes everybody feel good. None of this. Hey, uh, my husband. You know, whatever. Yeah. I'm trying to think of something without being too crude. Right. <laughs> My husband's always running around with other women. 
Didn't find out if you were, if you were sleeping with him or not. Oh, I know I'm like, I can talk that way. You know, you know, you know, you kind of think, say the black church, they tell it like it is. Yeah, go ahead. I, I must, I must be part of the soul. I'll tell it like it is. Yes, you do. Hello. I like it. If you're not sleeping with your husband and they're complaining about him running around, there's a problem. Uh-huh. Now, everybody say amen or all me, then I won't, they won't know I'm talking about you. <laughs> well, you can't say that if you don't say it in church, where are you going to get it from? It? Oprah? Dr. Phil? Uh-huh. Jerry Springer? <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> oh. I mean, all them people more messed up than the people they're supposed to be helping. You know? How did I get off on that? Because somebody need to hear it. I'm just going to let y'all think about that for a little while. No, we need to walk with God. Amen? You need answers, you need to go get them out of the Spirit. You need to get answers from the, from the Holy Ghost. You need to get answers out of the presence of God. All right? Now, verse 8 says this, that a believer, basically a believer, um, verse 8 says, the man who sows for his own flesh shall reap a harvest doomed to perish. Tiny bear. But he who sows for the Spirit shall the Spirit reap a harvest of eternal life. Now, it tells us we can sow two places. You can either sow to your spirit and reap a spirit-dominated Christ-like life, or you can sow to your flesh and get a flesh-dominated carnal lifestyle. Which one do you want to be sowing to? Which one do you want to be sowing to? And if you like your carnal results, keep sowing to the flesh. If you want a spirit-led, Christ-like life, sow to your spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Pit first Peter 1 Peter 1.23 says, Being born again, not a corruptible seed, but an incorruptible. By the word of God, which lives and abides forever. The 20th century says, Since your new life has come, not from perishable, but imperishable seed, through the message of the everlasting God. Now, obviously, perishable seed is, from, is, is the message of Satan. What's the message of Satan? Just turn on the TV. Yeah. All you've got to do today is turn on the television and you get the perishable seed. Hello? Yeah. I was, I was thinking about along this line this morning. You know, America built its, um, our republic was built on the, um, primarily, a little bit of Greek, but primarily the Roman model. The Senate, you know, and so forth. And we have, <clears throat> we're not a democracy. We have got, we, our constitution did not set us up as a democracy. If somebody says we're a democracy, they're wrong. <laughs> we're a constitutional, federalized, democratic republic. We are a republic. Now, our, uh, there's been attack after attack after attack to destroy our republic and turn us into a democracy. Why? Mob rule. Thomas Jefferson, everybody likes to quote Jefferson when he speaks about separation of church and state. They don't like to talk about what he said about democracy. Jefferson said that why would I trade a tyrant 3,000 miles away, talking about the king, for 3,000 tyrants one mile away, talking about a pure democracy. Okay? So we were established as a republic. All right? 17th Amendment watered that down extensively. Came out of the progressive mood. And the 17th Amendment made, made this, the election of senators by popular vote instead of appointed by the state legislatures, mm-hmm. which they had been before. So we're not, we know that, that has watered it down so strong. Because the people in California can come to North Carolina put a lot of money in and get somebody elected they want to elect instead of the state legislature. I don't like the 17th Amendment. And uh, wouldn't mind seeing repeal because we should have the states going back and doing what they used to do. But all that said, the Roman Empire was supposed to be the, one of the most enlightened societies in history. Amen? Mm-hmm. They were powerful. Yes, they were. Had the most powerful army in the world. And they failed. When did they fall? When litigation and homosexuality became the norm. What's the litigation? Suey folk. Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted to sue everybody over they tripped and My friend probably said a number of years ago, had a lady run to get into the church service trip in a pothole, and then suit the church. It means you just kind of go to tell. 
You're running to get into the church service because it's so good. And then you trip hurt yourself and you're going to sue the church because you got hurt. Get into the church service. You can't, you can't make this stuff up. Okay? I mean, you just can't, you can't make this stuff. Writers in Hollywood couldn't come up with that. Yeah. Going to sue the church because they got hurt trying to get into the service. And you know what? We could have sued Raymond a number of times. <clears throat> we, I mean, I've been trampled and knocked down and knocked around. People stuck behind doors trying to get in to get a seat. I saw one girl one day. She was in front of us. She stood there for four and a half hours in the rain. And she was at the front. And when they opened the door, the crack, the, the doors opened up. She was right in front of the door. And somehow when they opened up, the crowd kind of slid in and slid the door back. And we went by her. She, <laughs> <laughs> glass door. <laughs> this is over in the old Nanowski Center. When, and when they uh, used to have Winter Bible over there. Yep. Now, me and Alan, we were there together, so we we went, we, we saved her a seat, <clears throat> and then went and found her. But she was 33 rows back by the time she got in. She was the first person in line. Oh, that's never right. <laughs> but we didn't, she didn't sue Raymond. Right. Hello. But let, now, I'm coming to something. <clears throat> See, intellectualism takes over. And people start calling good bad and bad good. Hello? See, we say it's good to teach our children that Heather has two moms in the third, the third grade kindergarten. Jimmy has two dads. Put books in the school. If somebody comes to school with a Jesus shirt on, they throw them out. Uh-huh. Hello? They come with a rainbow on and LBGT rights and all that. They keep, oh, you're just, you were open minded. They're putting bathrooms in public schools now for transgender. Why? Yeah. yeah. I'm heading somewhere. Society will tell you things are good and things are bad. And they're telling you, you've got to accept it. See, the church doesn't have to accept it. Nope. And you don't have to start sowing the seed of the world. And the church has a lot of churches that are now ordaining. And let me tell you something. And when the minute they ordain the homosexual minister or priest, Ichabod gets written over their door. Ichabod is, is Old Testament ordinance. The Spirit of God has departed. Hello. Y'all here, y'all going home. Amen. Here. Amen. See, there's there's there is corruptible or perishable seed. Parents, if you don't know what your kids are watching at home when you ain't home, put a lockbox on them. Yeah. Because yeah. the ACLU will fight for the right to put porn in your house. Don't go fight for the right to have porn in public libraries. You hear you going home? You've got to guard your children against the, that, that perishable seed, that corruptible seed, so that they're not, they're not being pumped that stuff into their face all the time. Because they're out of your hands a lot of that. All right? Now, let me say something. Don't you be doing anything. Uh, yeah. All right. Hello? Go to bed, John. So I can watch the internet. Yeah, no. You're letting that devil in your house. Yep. I said, that devil's in your house. That one ever real big. Thank you, Gina. Glad you're with me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. So there's perishable seed out there. What's it going to do? When you sow to the flesh. See, God, God doesn't want you not doing things because he don't want you to have fun. He doesn't want you doing things that are going to be perishable, that are going to be destructive, that are right. going to bring you down. Exactly right. Now, the Roman Empire, one of the greatest empires in the history of, of humanity, fell. Now, remember, if you understand, you go ahead and study, study Roman, Roman history. All the, the rich ruling class, not just in homosexuality, they were in the pedophilia. Yeah. They all had 10 and 12 year old little boys yeah. that were their lovers. And it was accepted, it was accepted in society as normal. And if you don't think well, that's what's trying to happen in this country, you've got your head in the sand and you're an ostrich. And you're singing drop kicking these Satan through the goalpost of life. Remember back 20 years ago, all the homosexual one was to be left alone? Yeah. Now they want to be married. They want to destroy the institution of marriage. They want to adopt children. They want benefits. They want to serve you know, openly in the, in the military. You don't think that the, the man-boy lovers association isn't uh, looking for their rights. Some woman wanted to marry her dolphin. 
that song. I'm telling you, perishable seed. And when we allow perishable seed, listen, we can't control what the world's sowing, but the church should be sowing the right stuff. Yeah. The church should be sowing imperishable seed. We should be living godly. We should be living upright. We should be living holy. We should be coming out from among them and not touching the unclean thing. I know this isn't fun, but it's true. Yeah. We, like, we like the fun sermons, but look, if we don't get a hold of stuff and let the church start saying, no! And have, instead of having other Christians going, wait, we just got to, you have to understand where they are. No, we don't! I understand they're going to hell. And my job is to preach a gospel to them that liberates them and defeats the enemy in their life and brings them to the kingdom of God. Right. Not pat them on the back saying, it's all right, go ahead, baby. Right. Yeah. While we watch them drop off the cliff in the hell. Right. How ungodly of the church to <clears throat> let people go to hell because we don't want to offend them. Can I get an amen from back there somewhere? All right, thank you, Daniel. Amen. Yeah, you got Daniel's amen. amen. You know, you, we can't just send people to hell because we don't want to be called intolerant, yeah. homophobes. Yeah. They'll be calling you a pedophobe soon. And a horsephobe. Yeah. I know this is blunt, but I'm telling you, this is where the world's headed. <laughs> that's the perishable seed that's being sown out there. That's the things that are being said. Your children are having that coming against them. And, and listen, in our Christian household, all kind of junk is going on. Yeah. That so hard. So in our Christian household, yeah. all kinds of junk is going on. Yeah. And we're supposed to be putting planting imperishable seed. Yeah. Yeah. We're supposed to be sowing to the spirits. We're supposed to be walking godly. We're supposed to be walking upright. We're supposed to be walking with integrity. We're supposed to be demonstrating the character of Christ. Amen. That even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, we walk godly. And we reap a godly harvest. Amen. Amen. We do not want to be like Lot. Because righteous soul is best daily. So much so that his wife, doesn't it, as the leader, he allowed his soul to be vexed. Now, he made the right decision in the end. But because of his lack of leadership, his wife was turned to a pillar of salt. Yeah. Well, she, well, she doesn't want to look back. Had he been the right leader, she would never want to stay there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hello? Had he sowing the right kind of seed and lived the right kind of life, he didn't pack that left town a long time ago. He ran back out to Abraham and said, Hey, it's Sodom and Gomorrah down there. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get out of there. Are you here? All right. So, perishable seeds obviously the message of Satan, the spirit of, of, of the darkness or of the flesh. Connie Bear says the harvest of the flesh is doomed to perish. Now, get this whatever you're sowing to your flesh, you think you're not. The Bible says that sin has a pleasure for a season. Some of you all my message last week better, I know. But anyway, sin has pleasure for a season. Yeah. Then it's going to perish. Yeah. I said, then it's going to perish. Yeah. There's going to be a pay-up day for living in sin. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean God's going to send, necessarily send you to hell, but, you know, you can go down the road far and not get in trouble. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you what. AIDS didn't happen. I don't believe God sent AIDS. Right, right. I, just, I don't believe God. I'm gonna put age on him, living his lifestyle. I believe that the lifestyle eventually created this situation yeah. of perverseness. Yeah. And ultimately, you, you know, you go back and study the, the, a lot of the other STDs, and you find out they got came from bestiality. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, are y'all here? You went home. Yeah. Well, you gotta be quiet when you start talking like this. I can't believe says that in church. They say it. They're talking about it. the world. The church needs to be aware. You're right. right. Stand up. Right. Instead of acting like, well, yeah, we got everybody. Should, should, we got to come up with a cure so I can keep having fun. Stop doing the things that get the disease. You won't need the cure. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, touche. Amen. 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 Are you here? Yes, sir. You don't have to be concerned if you've got 15 illegitimate children out there. You have to be going around thinking about it. Back on the 
circumcision. It's not, we're a sex crazy society. We're told all the time it's normal. It ain't normal. You know what's, you know, you know what's normal? You know what God said that? Man marries a woman. Yeah. And they become one flesh. And they live in a monogamous relationship until death do us part. What happens if I'm divorced? Divorce can be forgiven. You can be restored. God will forgive you. God will restore you. But God didn't institute. We just have everybody running around everybody. Right. God will forgive divorce. That's, that's, that's one of the bad things in church. We told people they can't be divorced. Or you can't get, you know, no, God loves you. God will forgive you. God will restore you. Amen. God will. He does all the time. But his plan is for men to marry women. They know the kind of marriage and stay with them. Sometimes it's too easy to walk out. We need to learn to have some stick to it. Yeah. I'm going to do a little marriage counseling here. I've been married 32 years. Bill Driscoll has not been outside my bedroom window for 32 years to play the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> you know, Bill, that's real. You know, I mean, it's like everything's wonderful, glorious, you know. <laughs> right over the head there. I mean, don't know who Phil Driscoll is. Oh, bless you. <laughs> oh. Somebody asked Doc Sarah on Johnny Carson show one night and said, How does it feel to be the greatest trumpet player in the world? He said, I don't know. You have to ask Phil Driscoll. Yeah. Phil Driscoll is a, a Christian musician. Anyway. I mean, he plays drum, he hits those notes, and he just sends shivers up his spine. That's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. In 32 years, you're going to have wonderful times. You're going to have times that's just tough. Right. Things are tough. Life's go, throwing everything it can at you. I mean, you know what? You've got, to, you've got to be able to go through the tough times and survive. Yeah, right, right. Amen. You've got to be able to look at that and say, you know what? I'm committed whether I feel wonderful or not. You don't wake right. up one morning and go, I don't feel married, baby. I'm going to go out and find me a concubine today. Now, in my case, you'd be looking for a new pastor. <laughs> but my wife would kill me. She called me something. <laughs> we got married. She said, if you close the blinds, she's looking through the blinds. <laughs> she said, if you ever cheat on me, I'll kill you. Because they'll forgive me for murder, but they won't forgive me for divorce in the church. <laughs> and the look she had in her eye, that Cherokee kind of deep soul Cherokee thing came up. I still do. I still do. I asked about a tomahawk one day. It was, it was a small scale tomahawk. And I won't give her a big one. Hallelujah. Just in case she thought. Yeah. All right. We're, um, we're talking about seed. Israel was an example of sowing bad seed. They go along and they, you know, and, and then all of a sudden they start, you know, worshiping a false god. They go into captivity, bondage. They all kind of bass up right there. They, good king rise up or good judge would rise up. They repent, tear down the groves, start worshiping God. Good things started happening. The Bible says they were written to us as an example. Mm-hmm. In sample, in King James, means an example. Yeah. What's it as an example of? So good stuff, you get good stuff. So bad stuff, you get bad stuff. <clears throat> we want some good stuff. Amen. Amen. Now, now the works of the flesh are manifest. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, seditions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. What's that mean? That's not a full list. Right. Anything that's of that spirit of sowing to the flesh, even, even in excess. Now, how many like to eat? Uh-oh. Come on now, how many like to eat? Yes, sir. I like to eat. I enjoy eating. When I went over to Pigeon Forge, uh, a couple of days I went over to the to the old mill, got fried chicken and mashed potatoes one day, pot roast and mashed potatoes the next day. <laughs> Hallelujah, sweet tea. Go away, that dog. Mm-hmm. Went to Tony Romans and got a, a steak. Oh Woo! Stopped with the cooks in, in Asheville at the at, at the Biltmore Village and ate at the corner kitchen. 
Tell my mom not to see the eyes of old things. I don't know how to do it. And there was something else. Hey, I told you. Now, let me tell you something. You can't get up and buffet your, not buffet, buffet your body daily. Yeah. Are you here? Now, Paul did not say, I buffet my body. He said, right. I buffet it. <laughs> you can't buffet your body. You can't get up and run into the shutters to get the all you can eat breakfast buffet. Then run over the Golden Corral for the all you can eat lunch buffet. And then go somewhere else and got an all you can eat, you know, the Brazilian steakhouse and get all the, you can eat all the Brazilian stuff you want. <clears throat> it doesn't work that way. Okay? You cannot live that lifestyle of buffeting your body that way. No, you buffet your body. You keep it under. Right. You tell it no. Right. Men. Yeah, go ahead. When that sluzy <laughs> oh. comes up to you at work and starts flaunting herself in your face, you got to say no. Exactly right. But, but, but you just don't understand. You got a flesh. Yes, you can control your flesh. Uh -huh. You can tell your flesh no. Yeah, right. Now, what, what uh, Tony Cook just quoted an old quote this past week at our retreat. Sin, sin will take you further than you want to go, charge you more than you want to pay, and there's one else, and hold you than you long, long than you want to stay. Good. Hello. Take you further than you want to go, charge you more than you want to pay, and keep you longer than you want to stay. Now, I'm going to tell you something. That little thing at work. Come on now. Uh -huh, uh -huh. She's flirting with you. Now, you ask, you ask Bill Clinton. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Now, listen. That's, a, that's just an example. Oh, she, she came on to him. Uh -huh. I mean, she, would, you know, she, she wore see-through white pants and would turn around and pull the shirt up so he could see her backside and all this kind of stuff. And, and just, I mean, just mess with his head. I mean, messed him up. And what? What happened? It, it took him further than he wanted to go. It cost him more than he wanted to pay. And it held him longer than he wanted to stay. That thing ruined the rest of his presidency. He had to fight through that the rest of his presidency. That's what sin will do for you. And you think, well, I'm not the president of the United States. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you something. It'll do it in your personal life. It'll mess you up. What are you doing? You're sowing perishable seed. You're sowing to the flesh. And you see, the flesh is going to bring a harvest, and it's going to be a harvest doomed to perish, as Connie Bear says. It's doomed to perish. What do you want to do? You married? You told your wife? You committed to your wife? Then you say, no. That's it. That's it. Right. I'm not going to violate my covenant with my wife. Right. I'm not going to do it. Right. Reason, you know, and then you get, you'll, get, you'll get women or whatever come around to the woman. Uh, the woman's been offended and saying, you know, would you? Men got needs. Hot wash. Amen. Men, control your flesh. Right. right. Keep your body under. Uh -huh. Don't you know? I'm not going to finish my sermon. <laughs> that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Right. And the Bible says if you join yourself to a harlot, yeah. you become one flesh with her. You're going to take the Holy Ghost house over to a harlot. Amen. Go ahead, Pastor. That's good. <laughs> Ouch! Right as soon as we get done today, I'm going to have a healing line for toes. <laughs> Where you got your toes stepped on and got hurt, I'm going to pray for them. If, let me go back and read, read our, our, one of our first verses. Verse 7, chapter 6 of Galatians. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, out of David Phillips. Don't be under any illusion. You cannot make a fool of God. A man's harvest in life will depend entirely on what he sows. We have got to understand that there is perishable seed and imperishable seed. And if you're going to sow perishable seed, you're going to get a perishable result. And when you're sowing to your flesh, and you, then you wonder why your spiritual life is a mess. Because you haven't been sowing the good stuff into your spirit. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth good things. You can't bring forth good things if you don't have a treasure with good stuff in it. You got to put the good stuff in to get the good stuff out. Hello. Y'all here? Like I said, you can't go out to a field and plant weeds 
weed seed. What's your uh, plant? Is I mean, you ever, ever, ever found that out? I mean, you go out there and put this ground up down. You can put this down. You can put crab grass in there. You can do all kinds of stuff. You can put fertilizer before you grass. You can plant grass seed and leave it alone for three weeks. And all you got is what? Weeds. So let's say this. We'll add to it. You don't even have to necessarily plant bad seed. You just got to stop tending to it and put the good stuff in there. You can lay down and get lazy. Stop going to church. I don't need church. I don't need to be ministered to. I don't need no man telling me anything. Well, I'm not telling you anything. The Holy Ghost is. Yeah. Y'all here? You gone home? Still here. Thank you. Somebody's still here. All right. So we talk about the works of the flesh. I know we're running a little long. Here's the good news, folks. You can receive a good harvest. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. <clears throat> now, when we recognize we're getting bad seed, I mean, have you ever looked at your life and said, you know what? I don't have a good harvest going on in my life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. Now, I'm not talking about attacking the devil. I'm not talking about the evil day coming. And, you know, the devil just lined up and started taking you out. Yeah. <clears throat> you got to stand your ground and use your authority. Yeah. I understand that. But I'm talking about you're living in a consistent place where it just is just nasty bad. And you know it. Everybody say, I know it. I know You have to know the things you know Come on now. Yeah. You've been lazy. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Over here. Yeah. When you got a choice to come to church, you go fishing. Mm -hmm. Your life's a mess and you're going fishing. Go and hit the golf links. Hello? Going down to one of the. I guess let's go ahead and take it. Get bored at night and you're going out to the clubs. And the whole time the Holy Ghost is talking to you, say, stay out of there. Stay out of there. So what do you do? You drink six, seven beers so you can't get the Holy Ghost anymore. I got this when he talks to you drunk. Yeah. Good deal with your what your spirit's in there. He might be caught with in there, but he'll 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 deal with you. Why? Because your head, you're what? You're sowing a, a heart for a harvest of perish with doom to perish. Now, if you know that that's what's going on in your life, you need to make a difference. Well, first thing you need to do is you need to repent. Yes. Yes. You need to come to God and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. I have been sowing to the flesh, and I'm wrong, and I repent. God will forgive you. Yeah, you don't have the problem. You don't have to no, crawl up right. down the stairs of the basilica on your knees until they're bleeding. You don't have to get $10 million for some charity. You don't have to do any kind of penance. You have to come with a heart that is repentant before God. God will forgive you. Yeah, amen. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank God. Say, if I repent, God will forgive me. Now, what do you do after that? Then you go out and you tear up the field. If you got a field of weeds, you need to tear it up. Why? Because you're going to plant a good field this time. Yeah. In your spiritual life, you start praying for a crop failure of all that junk. Seriously. Right. Lord, I sowed a lot of bad seed. I pray for a crop failure in Jesus' name. You curse that seed so that it just die and dry up in the field and not produce. And now, Lord, for this day forward, I sow good seed. And what do you do? You come to church. You get into the Word of God. You get the books back out. You get the tape series out. You yeah. start feeding on the Word of God. You renew your mind to the Word of God. Be not conformed to this world. Amen? Romans chapter 12. It says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now the word conformed comes from a Greek word that means to be fashioned or shaped or actually molded to this world. Don't be molded to this world. Have you ever seen a mold? You know? How many of you have done a cake mold or a jello mold? And the stuff comes out looking like the mold. Right. When you are molded to the world, you come out looking like the world. Now, E.W. King has said in his writings, he made the statement, he said, the Christian that does not renew their mind to the word of God will imitate a sinner or be molded like the world. God doesn't want you molded like the world. Jesus said, come out from among them and be separate. That's not the only thing. Don't be like the world. But be transformed. The word transformed comes from the Greek metamorphosis. English word, metamorphosis. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 2, actually. Okay? 
Verse 1, Paul talks about submitting, giving his body, presenting his body as a living sacrifice, which is his spiritual service. And he said, to be not conformed, don't be more equal to the world, but be transformed. Experience a metamorphosis. He says this, by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Well, how do I renew your mind? You begin to feed on the Word of God. Yeah. You begin to let the Word of God speak to your life. Let me say something. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn of the ear. If you don't get harvest, that ain't put in the ground. It doesn't work that way. Do you name me a seed the day you put it in the ground, you get a harvest? But I gave that offer last year. I'll tell you right now. I put fifty dollars in the preacher's pocket, and somebody gave me two hundred dollars on the way out the door. That wasn't your harvest. I said that was not your harvest. That violates spiritual principle for that be your harvest. What? 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 what, 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 what I testified there by that was not your harvest. What was it? Bread for the year. Yeah. God's word says that he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater and multiplies your seed sown and increases the fruits of your righteousness. If you put $50 in a day and somebody gave you $200 on the way out the door, that was not your harvest. The $50 was your seed, you were to sow, and God's going to increase your seed. Yeah. But the $200 was your bread to eat while you're waiting for harvest. Yeah. That's good. That's really you missed good. the truth. You messed it up. You're thinking that the, that the bread was the seed. No, the seed was the sow. Yeah. That wasn't your harvest. Could have been your harvest. Nothing in the Bible ever produces a harvest instantly. Right. You sow the seed, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn of the ear. There's seed time and harvest. Yeah. But he also, God's also wise. And he knows that if you sow your seed, you've got to have something to eat while you're waiting for harvest. So he gives bread to the eater. Really good. Amen. Amen. So don't misconstrue the two. And don't think they're the same. So don't eat your seed because God gives you bread. Plant the seed. Everybody say, plant the seed. Now, in the, in the realm of finances and stuff, we have to plant our seed. But also in the realm of our spiritual life, we've got to plant the seed. I see big Christians getting miracles that have nothing to do with their faith. Yeah, right, right. Why? They didn't have enough faith to blow the, blow the I mean, if you put it in a, in a stick of diamond up the nose, it wouldn't even blow it. That he can stay, you know. Yeah. If all the you know, if all the if all the brain, if all the brain was dynamite and you put another blue, it wouldn't blow the nose. <laughs> but they get miracles. See, they're operating over that brain for the eater stage while yeah. they grow in faith. Right. Yeah. While they develop in faith. <laughs> while they mature in faith. Thank God, yeah, thank God for it. Kept, I mean, I'm telling you right now, this is stuff I did that I, I didn't know. I didn't have an ounce of whatever knowledge. Stupid, I mean, I was stupid, young, dumb, and on steroids. The young part and the dumb part on steroids. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. I'm not talking about just the natural. I'm talking about spiritual. Yeah. I'm gonna walk on water. You get your whole outfit wet. Yeah. See a lot of Christians. I'm a, watch this. I'm gonna walk on water. Well, number one, walking on the swimming pool has no purpose to it other than you being stupid. Yeah. Amen. So we're gonna start planting good seed. We're gonna plant the good seed of God's word. Amen. Uh, Peter Peter calls it, you know, being born out again out of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Connie Bear calls it perishable and imperishable seed. God's word is imperishable. God's word will begin to produce a spiritual life for you. If you'll feed on the word of God, feed on feed on the, the Psalms, feed on the, the gospels, feed on the, the uh, epistles, feed on God's word. You know, his daily bread. I'm not talking about that little bread box and little table with the little yeah. cards in it. I'm talking about the real word of God. I'm talking about getting into being a steward of the mysteries of God. Let your mind be renewed. Don't be conformed to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're to have the washing of the water of the word. Our minds to be renewed by the power of the word of God. Everybody say amen. amen. God's word will transform your spiritual state. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> and it won't take long. You keep after it, it'll change. It'll change your life. Yeah. Yeah. You'll think different. Yeah. You'll respond different. By Abraham became the father of a multitude the Bible says this, according to that which was spoken. He took a word from God and changed his life, changed the life of a nation, and changed your life. Yeah. Because if you're Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Yeah, yeah. Because right. a man decided to act on what was according to that which was spoken. Yeah, yeah. So shall that seed be. Your life can be transformed. Yeah, but you don't know what's going on around me. There's all kinds of junk going on around me. While we look not at the things which are seen. 
And then when Paul wrote to the church of oh, Corinth. Yeah, yeah. But of the things which are not seen. But the things which are seen are temporal. The word temporal means subject to change. But the things which are not seen are eternal. God's word is eternal forever. Oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. People come along now and say the word of God is not relevant. Honey, I got news for you. The word of God is relevant. It doesn't matter what century you live in, because his word is eternal. Let me tell you how relevant it is. Science is, uh, uh, a few years ago, I guess it has half decade, half century, proved that the universe is expanding in every direction at the speed of light from a single point. Now they all claim the Big Bang Theory, and I agree with them. Oh, I'm not here with your other side. Pastor Ed believes with the Big Bang Theory. Yeah. God said, light be. Light was. That was a bang. The mouth of God spoke it. Now let me say something. Why is it still expanding in every direction at the speed of light? Because he never told it to stop. The word light be is still being obeyed. Our whole universe is in obedience to the words light be. Remember, God, God is light. He operates at the speed of light. Satan beheld, Jesus beheld, Satan falls lightning out of heaven. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven operates at the speed of light. Are you here? You're going home. You're probably on warp drive. But anyway, wow. the word is in obedience. If the universe is still obeying God and expanding at the speed of light from just two words he spoke however long ago, what happens when you come and say, your word says that by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. That word has lost its power. When you come to him and say, I confess Jesus as my Lord. When you come to him and say, I sowed into the, into the kingdom of God and I reap a harvest. Whenever you begin to take God at his word. Amen. His word is still true. It's still true. All the promises of God in him are yea and in him. Amen. Yeah. All right. So now I don't think we got to verse 9. No, tonight we'll finish. I think you never know with me. I don't know you. 